Yeah, it's right there. You got him? We got it. This is a purse web spider, and look at how freaking creepy looking it is. A lot of people have been asking me, would I ever hold a purse web spider? And I think the answer to that is yes. Let's see how she cooperates. The forests of northern Florida are home to one of the most unique biomes on the planet. Longleaf pine forests and limestone prairies house some of the most unusual life forms in the world, and I'm after some of the most venomous. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and my mission to uncover the secrets of the natural world brings me to this part of the country in search of one of the most venomous snakes in North America, and I have help. My good friend Jack and I are hiking the understory of a particularly swampy habitat on a rainy day in hopes of seeing eastern coral snakes. But snakes aren't the only venomous creatures out here. While scouting deeper into the forest, Jack called out to me that he had found something very special, a clue that one of the most unusual spiders, and a fan favorite here on the channel, was lurking nearby, the purse web spider. We don't have any digging equipment, so we'll have to try something new. I'm going to gently tickle the spider's silk tube and hope she's enticed to investigate. I think I saw something. I can't be sure though. Give it a second. There. There. It's far enough up, I say just cut off the bottom. There. Yeah, it's right there. You got him? We got it. Alright, this is a purse web spider, and look at how freaking creepy looking it is. A lot of people have been asking me. Would I ever hold a purse web spider? I've handled hundreds of spiders, tarantulas, wolf spiders, some of the most venomous spiders on the planet, but I've never dared to handle an adult female purse web before. The reason? Watch this threat display. Their subterranean nature and poor vision means if they're seeing light, they're exposed, and they're not happy about it. And their similarity in looks to the deadly Sydney funnel web definitely gives me pause about handling them. But this spider seems to be super chill. She's slowly bumbling about, not threat posing or being skittish. So my question is, if I act as just a surface for her to walk on, could she be just as safe to handle as any regular spider? I think. The answer to that is yes. Let's see how she cooperates. Hi. Hi, look at you. As you can see right there, they can be a little bit cantankerous, but usually their instinct is not to bite. Yeah, you know, we, we don't know a whole lot about these spiders' venom. They do look kind of like the deadly Sydney funnel webs, but are only distantly related. And uh, we're not super sure what it would do to you if it bit you, but I think it's pretty clear that we're a lot more dangerous to these spiders than they are to us. Look how weird that spider is. Oh, her legs feel so funny on my palm there. It's a small spider, but she actually has kind of a weight to her because they're primarily very subterranean. They spend most of their lives underground and really only the males. Let's not have you fall there. I actually want to be careful and keep her close to the ground because look at how soft bodied she is. If she falls, she could take some serious, serious damage. Primarily only the males really leave their burrows and that's usually only to look for mates. These guys are a very, very secretive group of arachnids. As a result, most people don't even know they exist. What's crazy is these guys are part of a very fun, ancient group of spiders known as the megalomorphs. And they're really characterized by those huge, huge fangs that run parallel to their body. That's actually part of where the term megalomorph comes from. They're called the primitive spiders, but megalomorph actually means shrew form because of those big, huge teeth in the front and they're typically subterranean in nature. They look a lot like little shrews, these subterranean honestly kind of ugly looking mammals, which is kind of interesting. Look at the way she looks there. Those knobbly little legs, big, huge fangs, and tiny little eyes. I can't imagine that the vision of a purse web is very good. Probably just mostly those eyes are for distinguishing light and dark. So she probably can't see me, but she can see that she's out in the open. She feels exposed. She's fairly stressed and uh, is basically looking for a way back onto the ground. You can see she's actually dropping some web there. That's kind of interesting. Might be a safety line, but you know, these are not particularly good climbers. I'm actually not sure what she was doing with this web here. That's interesting. You can definitely tell this is not something that's going to be a big climber or a jumper. This spider is perfectly adapted for burrowing. And what'll happen is sometimes you'll accidentally dig them up and they'll actually go limp and bring all their legs in. And while this looks kind of big right now, they can actually get really compact. Those weird knobbly bent up legs allow them to fold into really tight spaces in their subterranean homes. And what they're actually doing is they build these silk tubes. And it's a really, really awesome mechanism for subduing prey. Now I say a lot of times here that 
the appearance of an animal can kind of give you clues to their biology. Sure, those big old fangs are very scary and make us wonder if they're highly venomous or something, but they're actually really useful for their pretty unique hunting strategy where a lot of spiders will actually actively hunt their prey or build these nice big webby traps that insects will fly into. This one lets insects announce themselves because what'll happen is the insects are walking around on the outside of that silk tube, creating vibrations that basically travel all the way down deep into the abyss where her lair is hidden. And what she'll do, she'll scurry up that silk tube. They can actually move pretty fast when they want to. Those little hooks on their feet, they can actually grip their web pretty nicely. What'll happen is that insects getting stuck and tangled in the web as it tries to climb up, she can actually use those super long fangs to spear the insect from inside injecting it full of neurotoxic venom and ending its life. She basically can pull the insect in down into the dark depths and she'll eat it. And that insect will never be seen again. Pretty gnarly creatures there, but as you can see, they're really not that interested in biting us. They do look pretty fearsome and they have a really gnarly threat display, but they are just simple creatures trying to make their way in the universe. And I absolutely love them. What a beautiful spider. Let's get her back out in the environment and see what else this nice little swamp has to offer. While we didn't get any venomous reptiles on this outing, we weren't short on frightening arachnids. Florida truly is chock full of incredible venomous invertebrates, and I gotta say, the pursweb spider isn't actually the creepiest one I've found. Further south, there is a terrifying giant centipede that slinks in the shadows of the city of Miami. If you want to learn more about that fearsome creature, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.